What is up, Butt Check family? Welcome back to yet again a beautiful day. That's right, we went back to back because this one we have to talk about. Anyway, chapters down below if you want to skip around. And of course, that sub button right there, so close on the race to 60K. Thank you guys for the amazing love. So without further ado, it is Wednesday, 2024. Ladies and gents, let's go. All right, now next up for them, just what in the hell was going on with the FGC code of conduct buttons that need to be checked. Okay, for those that may not be too familiar, the Smash community had like a Smash COC, something like that. It was like a code of conduct, right? Where they had individuals that came together to almost be like the overseers of the community, like and big names and whatnot, to where if something happened or somebody needed to be banned or discussed, they would kind of come together and make like an make like an official ruling. It was definitely an interesting idea and the FGC adopted the same thing. So we had a FGC COC, formed, when was it formed y'all, if I can remember? I wanna say it was either like 2021, it was right around 2020, because after everybody got banned in 2020, I wanna say they finally came out and said, hey, we got an FGC COC. But of course, it was met with a lot of pushback because you got other people that may be thinking what you are saying, wait, we're adults, who are you to judge us or govern us? We're all just here to play video games, we don't need leaders or police in the FGC. But from there, you know, certain people have still been banned and whatnot, but you really haven't heard much, right? I haven't seen any official FGC COC committee or anything like that posting anything or making announcements. But we have a very interesting update here from Professor Highkick, her information up on the screen and links down below. Definitely check her out at Tanisha Jane. Starting right here saying in 2024, there needs to be a code of conduct for the FGC. Y'all may be against it, but it would regulate a lot of stuff we've seen unfold on Twitter and at events over the years. At just Andy Nicole response to that saying, the only way that would work is a changing of the guard. Because one thing is for certain, not every pillar of the community has done what's best for the FGC that is growing while they choose not to. That's why it never worked. Not every idol in this scene is a good person. Professor Highkick responds to that saying, facts, that'll be hard to do though, but seeing as to what is slash has been happening, something needs to be done. They respond saying, until people stop being scared of having a voice and protecting people due to popularity, it'll just keep being the same shit different day, which sadly is on brand. Very few have truly grown in this space the right way. At Puppy Swarm responds to this saying, we did over a hundred TOs put a buttload of effort into the formation of a COC only for the worst actors in the space to grapple onto it and down the conversation to a vitriol about politics and control. The FGC is not a monolith. We are better off focusing on our own communities. Professor Highkick says, those are the same bad actors that should have been called out or contested. There was an opportunity right there to enforce things in my opinion. All of our communities is what makes the FGC what it is today, right? They respond to that saying, you can't broad strokes enforce and exclude people with bad vibes and magically shitty opinions on an FGC level. You can't broad strokes enforce and exclude people with bad vibes and marginally shitty opinions on an FGC level. You can on a local level, it's incumbent upon on locals to weed out and exclude the bad actors. You'll never get rid of all of them, but we can certainly improve locally. Then wrapping it up right here saying, well, if we're talking about bad actors, then they should be excluded once exposed. And if they have bad opinions, then I can sort of see where you're coming from. So there you have it. Definitely interesting, right? A whole talk of a need for an FGCOC when they're saying, well, we actually had one. We had over a hundred TOs only for it to kind of crumble from the inside out. Don't really know how accurate that is, because like I said, I'm not involved in that. Um, so it's very interesting to see if that's what actually happened and if they actually exist. And by saying that, I mean if they're actually still organized to where they communicate and try to make certain decisions. It just gets really political. And like I said, uh, if you go to Hagure's uh, Twitter, H-A-G-U-R-E, H-A-G-U-R-E. -E. He was very heavily involved with the fighting game code of conduct and he will he's illuminated some stories that happened there that were problematic and, and uh, some issues actually uh, happened uh, with the, in, within the governing body that was in the FGCOC. Uh, and not only that, but when you talk, when you've heard stories about the smash governing body uh, they started getting death threats. Like there were actual like threats to these people, right? And like I said, this kind of happened with me as well when I started speaking out about certain things. Um, so I don't know if a governing body is the right answer 
But then before we get out of here, I see one more opinion, something that you might be thinking, right? At 2D Forever saying less attacking people's character and personal life, more trash talking and money matches. If we work on ourselves mentally, we can prevent things getting out of hand. Best of sets playing a variety of games, even those you don't main to get games more exposure and unity in the scene. There is only one FGC. So instead, let's celebrate our differences. Team up your best match player for your favorite Tekken slash MK slash SF player in a round robin tournament and to see who's the most versatile on the sticks. Can X properly train Y and vice versa? What do you think would be the ultimate pairing? Just use those games as an example, by the way, could be any mix. And of course, Professor Highkick responds to that saying, you mean keep it in the game? That's easier said than done with certain people who lack self-awareness and control as well as keyboard warriors. Then I see they pretty much agree down here below, right? Saying, yup, I'd rather try than not. I still see men pushing 40 using their FGC platforms to make fun of people, etc. Really have to look at these individuals. Some of you see as pillars. It trickles down from the top. Ratios don't make you right. You just have more influence. Leave it in the game. Professor responds saying, absolutely. Damn, that is church right there, ain't it? Okay, so now we got that perspective. How y'all feeling about that? I do agree with that, what he said, right? What he said, um, really have to look at these individuals. Some of you see as pillars trickles down from the top. Ratios don't make you right. Listen, I've talked on some button checks. I've talked on the Patreon where I feel like some members uh, that are considered pillars in the community, um, they do. They might talk a lot of shit or they might downplay people, especially, especially when it comes to Twitter whether it comes to content. Hell, they've even done it to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody does not love everybody. We already know that, right? Let's be real. This is life. This is FGC, right? This is everywhere. Everybody does not prefer everybody, but some people take it one step further where they will talk shit and downvote and just try to badmouth or cancel people the, any chance they get. That's the problem I have a point with, right? We're all adults. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, whatever. We're all adults. Why the hell do we spend so much time just fucking hating people, like truly hating people. But back it on up to Professor High Kick, where they're like, yo, you're talking about keeping in the game, which is great, but that's easier said than done. You know what I'm saying? Because for some individuals, they're too hard headed and there needs to be a FGC, a COC. There needs to be some kind of penalty. How y'all feeling about all of this? How y'all feeling about any of this? You know what I'm saying? When it comes to the initial FGC, COC and the need for a possible new one, or is the FGC a monolith and we're better, better just handling everything on a local level? How y'all feeling? Let me know. And that leads us to these next set of buttons along that same topic. So if you didn't know, the FGC only in the second day of this year was trending. Literally, the FGC was trending. Of course, you had to click on it, see what the hell's going on. There was a hot debate. Starts off right here with this tweet, right? Definitely going viral. I'll put their information on the screen and link down below. And by the way, I'm putting their information like I do with everybody's information because it's part of the news story. We're not doing it so you can gaslight anybody or talk shit or all that other stuff. It's simply for the news and to give them recognition. Okay, starting it right here, they post this saying, FGC, we're such a welcoming community. We really want to grow together. FGC to a new player learning the game. You're fucking trash. Never touch this game again i am a superior player because i spend all day in the lab something you wouldn't know nothing about noob then you have a whole bunch of mixed reactions right it's not just people saying yes i co-signed this but it's a lot of others saying well we don't see it the same way like or at least they don't see that it's all that serious let's dive in first reply to that says please tell us the perfect welcoming and friendly competitive community because i truly don't think it exists the post you shared exists in every competitive community and they usually get eviscerated publicly and only spew that rhetoric online even outside competitive gaming she replies to that saying i didn't say it didn't exist in other gaming communities i'm literally just talking about this one i don't get what your point is they all fucking suck they respond to that saying original post just comes off literally painting community as a whole when it's been most welcoming out of all the gaming ones I've been in, especially compared to League of Legends and FPF games. Others adding to that saying, what you have described is the internet, not the FGC. Touch grass, 
find local, travel if you can. But she responds to that saying, your internet community is still a part of the FGC. I've been to multiple large scale FGC events that changes nothing. Stop dismissing the actual problem with online players, which is a big part of your community. Dismissing toxic online players isn't making you guys look any better. Then gets a little deeper right here saying, you're expecting co-op treatment in a community that is competitive by nature and people whom usually doing their own thing. This type of behavior is a hazing like effect and just trolling that isn't meant to be taken seriously, clearly you took the bait. And she responds to that saying, ooh, hazing a new player is a way you guys tried to show a welcoming community? This isn't the right message if you're trying to prove me wrong. Who the fuck wants to go through an initiation to play a game casually? What a weird thing to say. And at ATL Funky P wraps it up right here saying, we need to realize the FGC is pretty far removed from the arcade street rats 20 plus years ago, and the primary source of new members has been from online players for the past 10 years. We still need to maintain a safe, welcoming environment, both online and off. Damn, so how y'all feeling about that one? That one's pretty wild, right? So I think there's truth on both sides. I wanna say the way that it was initially worded, right? When it says, we're such a welcoming community, we wanna to grow together, and then also FGC, uh, players learning a game, fuck you, you're trash, yada, yada. But that's the thing. I think some people are like taking offense because they're saying, well, you're putting us all in that box. And like James was saying, we do way more good than bad that you might see on social media because I'm bad, I'm bad. On social media, the bad is what usually gets highlighted and goes viral. What do you feel about that last statement, right? That one of them's at the end where they were talking about, it's the 20 year old arcade rats <laughs> that are holding on to this. And we need to realize like they're the gatekeepers, so to say. And it's more so the online members for the last 10 years. It's not the arcade days anymore. We need to let go. Let me know how y'all rock with them because we know a lot of people that can be considered old heads. I know I could be considered one because I grew up in the arcade days. Can be looked at like we don't want to change our ways or we're like back in my day type of shit. Um, or we feel like the FGC or esports can be getting soft. We've heard that. We've heard that argument a lot, right? Do you feel like that could be a thing here? Or do you, as a newcomer, let me know if you're new within the FGC in the last 10 years, do you feel the same way as far as like against the FGCOC or this statement that was made right here about the FGC in general? Obviously a lot of interesting perspectives from my point of view. I've been FGC for a long time. I've been a ga gamer since I was born. So you see it. I saw it in stand-up comedy. I saw it online. I saw it as a content creator. You're gonna see toxic shit. It's sad, but it's always gonna be there. Some are gonna be fucking heinous and others are gonna be a little watered down, but you're gonna see it. But obviously if you put everybody in a box and I'm not saying that's what she's doing, but I'm just saying in general, if you do that, people are gonna take offense because obviously there is a lot of good. There is so much good in this community. Now, what's the answer? How do we fix it? No fucking idea. There it is, ladies and gents. Definitely let me know how you are feeling. Woo, FGC is on fire, literally. Only day two, we're already trending. By the time y'all see this, it's gonna be like day three, something like that, and we on fire. 2024 starting off with a damn bang, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. You know what I'm saying? Could just mean we got more passion, we got more heat than we did in 2023. I would hope so, you know what I'm saying? Because it did seem a little lackluster before Street Fighter VI, MK1, and all this other stuff got announced. It did in the beginning anyway. So long story short, hopefully this is a turn for the better. How y'all feeling? Thank you guys for the amazing love. Patreons, thank you guys for holding it down. You got a brand new video coming your way tonight, I believe. Not really sure, hey, I'm gonna be real with y'all. Not really sure what it's gonna be because it's my wife's birthday so i'm running a little behind we're actually going to do a little getaway for the day maybe i'll film from there not really sure but i hope you guys can get with it because really what i'm trying to do is just give the love back remember we have a special patreon giveaway coming up at the end of this month and as always we'll see you soon if not tomorrow definitely the next day and y'all already know i don't know what it is but i know it's about to get better love y'all forever Peace. blah 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 subscribe oh, you can and now for that moment of FGC bliss, this one comes to us from none other than Forever King. I'll put his profile on the screen. This is beautiful, right? I don't know if y'all know, but his girlfriend is in the NRS community as well. She's a pro uh, MK1 player. She's been in the scene for quite some time by the name of Infinity. But apparently they both ended up in finals playing each other in tournament. Boyfriend against girlfriend running the set. Forever King posted this saying, I fought against Infinity uh, in finals of tagging the tournament, right? A $500 MK1 tournament. It was a good match. 
If you want to see the full fight, check out the link below. Happy New Year, and I'll do you one better. I will also post the link below. Check it out. I'm not going to post the end result because I think it would be giving away too much. I want y'all to go to his page, check it out, show the love. I'm interested. As soon as I turn on this damn camera off, I'm going to go. But what I will show you is this clip because it's godlike. He actually ends up doing... <laughs> He actually ends up doing back shots. I don't know if you guys have seen how you could do that at MK1. FGC is, check it out. On the stage, they're literally going back and forth the way they are. But the entire time gets stuck, and Forever King is able to stuck, and Forever King is able to stuck, and Forever King is able to just take it out. And we have the first. I mean, on one hand, it could be disrespect, but that's his girl. If you're going to backshot anybody, you're going to backshot your girl. You know? Hell, that's what you do. What you do behind closed doors. That's not my That's not my concern. But this is in open doors. This is in fucking finals. <laughs> I'm sure she's cool with it. Hell, she'd probably do it to him. Hey, like I said, I don't judge. I don't be judging.